Hello, dear friends, my name is Dr. Igor Atabekov. I am a clinical oncologist practicing since 2010. Today our topic is atrophic gastritis or metaplastic gastritis. What should we do with that? What are the symptoms? What are the causes? Uh, how can we diagnose it and how can we treat it? And how can we prevent cancer? So, let's get started. So this is our plan, as you see, and we will talk one by one on all these questions. Here you can see our stomach. This is esophagus, from where we, the food comes when we swallow. There is a sphincter here that closes. We don't want the stomach acid to go up and do harm in esophagus, as uh, esophagus is uh, not good in dealing with uh, stomach acid. And next goes the duodenum. This is a small intestine. Here there is other sphincter that closes. We don't want the duodenal contents to go back to stomach, as stomach is not good in dealing with that. It does like uh, bile coming here, because bile will cause inflammation and worsening of uh, gastritis. Here is our liver, gallbladder. The bile is coming to the uh, duodenum. Also, there is a pancreas that throws its um, enzymes into duodenum and normally all this stuff don't go back to the stomach. What is atrophic gastritis? Uh, this is a type of uh, inflammation in stomach when there is also atrophy of uh, stomach wall and becomes thin and the uh, important uh, cells are lost and they cannot uh, do their functions anymore. What are the functions? Of course producing uh, stomach acid of course, uh, producing uh, pepsin, that is an uh, enzyme to digest proteins, uh, producing their uh, intrinsic factor. This is a protein that is important to absorb vitamin B12. And if we have problems with uh, stomach, of course, all these functions will be impaired. Here you can see normal stomach with uh, these folds, and here you can see atrophic stomach without any folds. What are the types of uh, gastritis, atrophic gastritis? Mm, first of all, it can be autoimmune. Uh, it usually occurs in this region of the stomach. Uh, and uh, it's connected to antibodies that immune system produces against its own stomach cells, against parietal cells that produce uh, acid, and against the uh, intrinsic factor that is important to absorb vitamin B12. So we can see these antibodies uh, in uh, many patients with autoimmune gastritis. Also, it can be triggered, the start of this gastritis and autoimmune attack can be triggered by Helicobacter pylori or pylori. 2% of uh, population may have uh, the autoimmune type of uh, atrophic gastritis and also this type of gastritis is connected to many autoimmune conditions. Most uh, important, I would say, is uh, thyroid disease. It's uh, autoimmune thyroiditis. Or Hashimoto disease. Uh, up to one third of those patients may have uh, also uh, autoimmune gastritis. So again, in those patients we see low uh, acid, low pepsin, the enzyme for digestion of proteins, low uh, vitamin B12 as it's not absorbed, and mm, of course low iron. It's uh, characteristic for all types of gastritis because we need to have uh, acid to uh, transform iron into the absorbable state. Also, if there are some uh, protein uh, complexes with uh, micro elements, with vitamins, uh, they must be digested. So, these uh, smaller molecules will be absorbed. If not, it won't be absorbed. That's why patients may have vitamin deficiencies and iron deficiencies. There may be no symptoms at all. There may be some discomfort in stomach, uh, dyspepsia, um, the pain after eating, there can be some fullness, it can be bloating, uh, meteorism, a lot of gas. It may be problems with uh, stool, for example, constipation or diarrhea, and also symptoms of anemia, a low erythrocyte or hemoglobin. First, iron deficiency comes, and uh, low iron uh, will impair the synthesis of hemoglobin, and those patients may have some very unspecific symptoms like weakness, uh, pallor, uh, maybe sometimes uh, fatigue, maybe loss of hair, bad quality of nails, 
a restless leg syndrome when they go to the bed. They don't know where to put their legs. And sometimes it can be pika when you hurt like pregnant women are searching to eat something weird, like for example dirt. And if it's autoimmune gastritis, Afterwards, in few years usually, B12 deficiency may occur. The severe form is called pernicious anemia, and uh, B12 deficiency also adds some more symptoms, like neurologic symptoms. And uh, in this case, a uh, patient may have some numbness or tingling in their fingers, uh, or may have uh, cognitive problems, memory problems, concentration problems, mood disorders, and one must be aware that it can be caused by low B12. Also low acid doesn't allow these sphincters to work properly, meaning that it won't close if there is not enough acid and the contents may go up to the esophagus, causing heartburn or maybe causing the cough in the morning or at night, some weird taste in the mouth or acidic taste and it will also cause the inflammation in the esophagus and bile may go back to stomach because the sphincter is not working and cause inflammation there and worsening of gastritis. And this is the second form of gastritis. Uh, it can be called environmental gastritis caused by some other factors. Uh, for example, uh, by Helicobacter pylori. And Helicobacter pylori lives in pyloric region. It causes inflammation, atrophy, and uh, afterwards, with years, as this inflammation progresses, it will go to there and spread to all the stuff. But at the beginning, it usually starts here. Also, they can be, for example, chemical gastritis caused by alcohol, by smoking, by some bad diet. And uh, the other thing, this um, atrophic uh, mucous uh, membrane here, the wall of stomach, the body will try to protect it. It will grow other epithelium there, but it will be of intestinal type. Epithelium of intestine, grows in stomach. It's totally not normal, it should not grow there. It's called intestinal metaplasia. Afterwards, with years, it can become uh, more ugly, mutated, uh, and uh, this is already called dysplasia, it's already precancerous, and uh, it's an increased risk of uh, stomach cancer in future. What is important in diagnosis? First of all, uh, very important to do gastroscopy and uh, to understand if there is a helicobacter infection. Uh, what are the methods to determine uh, the presence of uh, helicobacter? First of all, uh, it can be serology or uh, just taking blood to check for antibodies against uh, H. pylori. Antibodies is a good test, it's easy and it shows uh, whether there was any contact uh, of immune system with this bacteria. The problem is it doesn't show us uh, if there is bacteria right now, it was before. Just there are antibodies, there is immunity against it. Uh, next, other test. There is a breath test when the person drinks special fluid uh, with marked substances and if there is helicobacter it will process this fluid and then the person will breathe out the, this marked substance and we will determine it. It's more expensive. It's a, quite a good test. If it is positive, it, uh, says, it shows us that really there is a helicobacter present. If it is negative, it doesn't tell us if uh, the, it is present or not. What do I mean? Uh, sometimes uh, there is helicobacter, but the test is negative. Or sometimes if the patient takes some drugs like omeprazole, pantoprazole, lansoprazole to decrease the acidity, uh, it uh, will be negative also. That's why I have other tests. Uh, gastroscopy, of course. We can see the stomach, we can do biopsies take samples, watch under microscope if there is any problem, if there is any cancer risk, and also we can see bacteria there. But also there is one more test, very modern and good test. We can take stool sample and see if there are small pieces of bacteria there. It's called um, antigen of uh, helicobacter in stool, in stool antigen test. And it's both sensitive and specific, meaning it has low risks of false results. And one more risk. Small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Uh, we know that there are protective mechanisms like peristalsis, normal movement of bowel, and uh, uh, our acid in, in the stomach that will destroy and kill extra bacteria. We actually don't want a lot of bacteria in our small, gall, uh, small bowel because it, they will compete for our food, for our vitamins, 
and uh, they will produce uh, too much uh, gas and too much uh, different uh, toxic substances uh, from their metabolism. Uh, that's why it's good when all the bacteria are mostly in the large bowel and it's only fiber that we cannot digest. In the case of atrophic gastritis, there is high risk of this uh, bacterial overgrowth. It usually causes some discomfort, uh, bloating, uh, gas, loss of vitamins, loss of uh, nutrients. And here you can see that almost 60% of uh, patients with atrophic gastritis may have also this SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And what is interesting, if the patients have just have heartburn, no, no atrophic gastritis, and they are taking a proton pump inhibitors, omeprazole, pantoprazole, lansoprazole. If they are taking it for first half a year, the risk of the SIBO is just 8%. If uh, they take it from half a year to one year, it's already 20%, more than 20. Uh, more than one year, it's already more than 60% chance of having uh, too or much bacteria in their small bowel. What other nutrients except iron or B12 or protein can be deficient? Of course, it's vitamin D, it's folate according to this article. And we know that patients with trophic gastritis have uh, many times higher risk of uh, developing stomach cancer compared to people who don't have trophic gastritis. What is the diagnosis? Of course, we already talked about gastroscopy. We already talked about determining Helicobacter pylori. If it's autoimmune gastritis, we detect antibodies against parietal cells, intrinsic factor. We uh, ch uh, check for gastrin. Gastrin is a hormone that is produced by our stomach uh, if there is not enough acid, meaning stomach cannot produce acid and it will produce more gastrin trying to make it produce more acid. Also, reduced ratio of pepsinogen 1 2. We do complete blood count. We see hemoglobin and uh, red blood cells. We know that iron deficiency can cause anemia, B12 deficiency can cause anemia. Also, between B12 deficiency can cause uh, lowering of platelets and white blood cells. We check iron studies. All four tests are important. This is ferritin, transferrin, sorry for this TLS, uh, iron and uh, transferrin binding capacity. Also, we check for B12, folic acid and vitamin D. And in the case of autoimmune gastritis, check for thyroid disease and diabetes, as other autoimmune diseases may be also present in such patients. How do we treat atrophic gastritis? First of all, we need to decrease the inflammation. Uh, of course, uh, we can easily find uh, diets for gastritis uh, in internet. I won't pay a lot of attention on uh, that uh, question. The food must be of um, moderate temperature, not too high, not, not too hot, not too cold, not spicy, not fried, not too greasy avoid to acidic products, don't eat, for example, tomatoes or citrus fruits, no raw food, no chips, etc. Second, we know that acid is very important because of uh, normal digestion, because of normal protection, because of normal work of sphincters. Uh, that's why, as we treat inflammation, uh, the stomach may restore its ability, its ability to produce acid. Also, if you're taking drugs to decrease acid production. Uh, they may be cancelled after consultation with the medical professional because some patients really need them. Third, uh, someone can take the supplements uh, to replace their deficient uh, stomach acid. Uh, for example, some people take uh, vinegar, some people take betting chloride, but be careful with that, uh, especially during uh, different exacerbation or uh, too high inflammation, ulcers, erosions, uh, very active esophagitis or chronic pancreatitis. Because in these situations we are not allowed to eat acidic uh, foods, uh, why would we be allowed to drink, to take uh, vinegar, even if it's uh, diluted? That's why all the treatment depends on the situation in the uh, patient. Also very important, supplements of folic acid may actually help to decrease risks of uh, uh, stomach cancer. As you see here, you can do pause and uh, watch this article in more details if you wish. And the other article, they were taking 5 milligrams of folate for half a year and they see the improvement of uh, atrophic changes in the stomach. Also, antioxidants may help to protect from uh, too much inflammation and from damage to stomach wall. There are some other uh, drugs and supplements 
that may be helpful. For example, this is a Chinese uh, substance. I don't know even how to read as a name. Teprenon also. You can pause it and uh, watch if you wish the uh, watch the articles. Also quite fresh meta-analysis. Uh, Molo Dan. Not sure if I'm reading correctly. Sorry for my English. These things may be also potentially helpful. But according to the official recommendations of many countries, I watched a lot. The only things that they recommend is uh, eradication of Helicobacter if it uh, exists. By the way, many patients with atrophic gastritis don't have Helicobacter. Uh, because even if it triggered uh, the gastritis far ago, uh, afterwards, when this atrophy progresses, uh, stomach becomes not a very um, comfortable place to live for Helicobacter. And uh, also, low acidity uh, makes um, other bacteria to have opportunity to grow in uh, stomach. And too much competition with Helicobacter may cause its uh, disappearance but by recommendations if there is helicobacter please remove it and the second uh, recommendation is you need to observe those patients do uh, gastroscopies uh, depending on the situation depending on the changes uh, if there is a metaplasia if there is a dysplasia uh, precancerous changes um, every two years every three years every five years depending on the country and situation next don't eat too much salt moderate amounts of salt are okay I have a separate video about salt. And my one more interesting article about oats. Oatmeal is also good for uh, stomach uh, inflammation and atrophy. By the way, I love oatmeal and I eat it every morning. Dear friends, I was preparing this lecture for a very long time. As, uh, as you see, official recommendations do don't recommend a lot. And uh, what should that patients do if they have atrophic gastritis? Just wait and observe. Um, as for me, it's so-so. That's why I was uh, searching a lot for different articles, so what can really help. By the way, I forgot to tell you about Omega-3. It may also be helpful in such situation. Uh, that's why I would be very grateful if you go to comment section and write something, mm, at least three words of good wishes or bad wishes or Tell me what you think, share your situation, just write something. I would appreciate it. And by the way, if you're feeling bored and you want to support my channel, please uh, feel free. There is a link to my PayPal in description below. And that's all for today. I hope you already pressed the bell under the video to subscribe and not to uh, miss the next videos. I wish you a good day. God bless you. Good luck. Goodbye. Don't be afraid.